Are you clapping? Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Will you take a minute or two and welcome somebody to church? Just welcome somebody. Welcome somebody. Tell them it's always great to see you, to have you in the house. Tell somebody, I thank God you are still here. I thank God you are still here. I thank God you are still alive. I thank God for you. Come on, put your hands together. With your hands lifted up, say, Heavenly Father, thank you for sparing my life. Thank you for sparing the life of my loved ones, home and abroad. Thank you for divine escapes. Thank you for divine preservation. Thank you for if it has not been for the Lord, that was on my side. My enemies would have rejoiced over me. Thank you for being on my side. Thank you for being on my side. Can you open your mouth and just thank him? Thank him. Thank him for being on your side. If, I, if it has not been for the Lord, that was on my side. Hey, then my enemies would have rejoiced over us. Thank you for being on our side this morning as we gather those of you online if you have friends loved ones I want you to text them all over the world text them and let them know that it's time to feed our faith and to starve our fears these are the days of feeding your faith and starving your fears and your doubt Reach out, use all your connections on social media, send the link, reach out, tell them Papa is online, service is already in motion, reach out, with your hands lifted up, say in the name of the Lord Jesus, as we gather, those of you in bed in the house, on your bed, on the sofa, get up, get up, don't don't be too comfortable. Get up from your bed. Say as we gather all across the world to receive illumination and light. For we recognize that the entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding to the simple. Say we break spells. We break manipulations. We intercept triggers. In the name of Jesus, and say, Heavenly Father, any advantage the enemy uses to hinder, to deny me of receiving light and illumination in the name of Jesus, I am all, I am all, I deny, I deny the enemy of any advantage and power he uses to keep me ignorant, to keep me in the dark in the name of Jesus and now I declare father the ear to hear the eye to see both are gifts from the Lord therefore heavenly father this morning let me have eyes to see and ears to hear I receive eyes to see ears to hear and I break the spells I destroy the veil as I put my hands together I break the spell I destroy the veil and I command the ear to hear I receive the ear to hear the eyes to see for both are gifts from the Lord cause me to see the hidden agenda of the enemy cause me to recover from my ignorance and blindness let me see let me recover from my ignorance from my blindness in the name of Jesus we bind every dark cloud 
we dispel every dark cloud. Now, lift up your hand. Say in the name of the Lord Jesus, we intercept every dark cloud over our loved ones, our families, domestic and external. Say any dark cloud, any evil cloud over our family, our loved ones, home and abroad, and over this house, and over this nation, any evil cloud, any dark cloud, say by the blood of the covenant, we intercept and expel, intercept and expel, put your hands together, intercept, expel, evil clouds, dark clouds, over your loved ones, over your family, over your dwelling, over this house, over this nation, we intercept, evil clouds, dark clouds, put your hands together, open your mouth, intercept, expel, dark clouds, evil clouds, over our families, our dwelling, over this house, over this nation, lift it up somebody, lift it up somebody, lift it up somebody. Hallelujah. Put your hands together and be seated. For thou, O Lord, art I above all the earth. Thou art exalted. Father, Lift up your hands. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Lift up your hearts. interesting times in the history of humanity as I have said in the past 2024 is the biggest year in the history of the world when it comes to election we have over 60 nations of the world this year going to the ballot box, over 60 nations, 49% of the population of the world are holding an election this year. It's a year of struggle of power. It's the year of the wrestling of power. It's a year of betrayal. It's a year of desperation. It's a year of uncertainty. When men and women will go to any extent for power, irrespective of who they throw under the bars, irrespective of what they do to hurt others, hey, they will ignore the consequence of their action. And it doesn't matter how long you get away with anything. Please make no mistake. For it is written... Galatians 6, 7. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. For whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall reap. For God is not mocked. Tell somebody, my God cannot be mocked. My God cannot be mocked. You can't mock him. He cannot be mocked. It's just a matter of time. Tell somebody, it's just a matter of time. It doesn't matter how long you're getting away with it. It's just a matter of time and it will catch up with you because God cannot be mocked. Yeah. Sometimes people get away with things and think that they become masters of it. And they use gifts and they use money and they use all kinds of things to try to appease God and get away from consequences of their action. No, 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 no. You won't. You can't. It doesn't matter when you take from the poor and others. And you kill and destroy others. And then you take from one and go give to a man of God or the church or orphanage or whatever. And you think that by doing that, your good works will exempt you from the consequence. No. Scripture cannot be broken. You are in defiance. Yeah. You are in bridge. And it doesn't matter the good works you display. Unless you repent. Unless you change your heart. And you humble yourself. And realize that you can't go on hurting people. And doing wrong by others. And get away with it. It's just a matter of time it catches up with you. Many years ago. There was a man in this country. He was very powerful. He was feared. Feared. His name caused people to tremble. Many years after, I went to Kumasi to see the Asante Hine. On my way back, I saw him at the airport at Kumasi. He was sitting there with a walking stick. 
And I looked at him and I said, is that the man that terrified this nation? Is that the man that everybody feared? And I looked at him and I said, power has expiry date. It's just a matter of time. There come a time when everything comes to a halt. And on that day, the only thing that stands is the word of God. For heaven and earth may pass away, but the word abides forever. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. About 40 years ago, I was traveling and I met a vice president in this country who was so powerful then. He was sitting at the last gate to enter the plane alone, also with a walking stick, all alone, very fragile, shaking like this. And I looked at him and I said, if this is the end of all this power people strive for, kill for, destroy, hate for, Device, scheme, for. If this is the end of it, I don't want anything to do with this. When I'm old and gray-headed, I want to be surrounded by my grandchildren and great-grandchildren and loved ones. I want to be loved and I want to have acceptance. And the only way you can do that is to make sure that it doesn't matter how much power and influence and money and connections you have, never lose your humanity. Don't lose your humanity. You know, I was telling somebody the other day, I said, I've known President Kufour since he was president, before he became president, and after he became president. And I visit him every now and then. And since he's been out of power, I go check on him every now and then. And every time I go, there are people there. Every time he go, there are people there to see the man, in queue, waiting to see him. Every time I go there, there are people there. You know why there are people there? It's because of his humanity. They are not there for money. They are not there for power. They are there because of his humanity. Because he learned the common touch. Though he was president, he did not lose his humanity. He learned to still connect to people, help people, invest in people, bless people. So even though he's out of power, and he doesn't have the money you think he may have when he was in government, he's still very rich. And his, his riches is his humanity. His, his connectivity to humanity and to people. I was telling them, same about President John Dramani Mahama. Humanity. Humanity. Anytime you go to his house, there are people there. Cars are parked all over the street. They are there to connect. To connect, not to power, not to connect to money, but to connect to humanity, connect to hu hu relationship, humility. That counts when everything fails. Tell, let me tell you, money, power has expiry date. There come a time when money and power can help you. There are mighty people in this world who are billions of dollars. Like the Gaddafis and the Saddams and so many others, the Hitlers. And there came a time when their money fails. There came a time when their power could not save them. Ah, Solukutun, Kalundavas, Selaya Katu Wakasin, Levukulakis. I said to the church the other day, I said there are people in this world, eh? they are so poor, so poor, that all they have is money and power. When you take away their money and their power, they have nothing. Because the thing that the only thing that makes you relevant and gives you acceptance in this life eh, is money and power. So they live all their life wanting power, wanting money, only to find out at the end of it all that power and money has limitation. There's an extent to which power and money will take you, and that is it. But goodwill, the common touch, and your humanity will take you places power and money can take you. Put your hands together and give him praise.
Please be seated. As we get into the Word of God, we have some few things to do today. I ask, I called Bishop very early hours of this morning, about four o'clock, the Lord woke me up and said, declare a Passover. Declare. So I called, I said, Bishop, do we have enough communion for both services? He said, I'll try. I said, we must have communion service today. We must declare a Passover by the blood of the Lamb. Let the evil clouds pass over. Let every dark cloud that is gathering over us and our loved ones and over this house and our nation, let that evil cloud pass over. Somebody put your hands and say, pass over, pass over, pass over, pass over. I was to teach on facing the future without offense. Facing the future without offense. Then I said, I either preach that or I deal with keep declaring and keep saying it till you see it. And after I finished those two messages, I said, Bishop, I'm still not feeling it. I said, I am not feeling facing the future without offense. And I am not feeling keep saying it till you see it. So I said, put aside all those scriptures. He said, what are you going to do? I said, we are declaring a Passover this morning. There's too much of afflictions, too much of pain, too much of sufferings, too much of restlessness and storms and stubborn situations in the life of families. A young man so close to the father attempted to murder and kill his father the other day. A husband tried to murder his love, his wife, and said he didn't understand and don't know what came upon him. He was triggered. There are all kinds of triggers going on that we need to intercept. Strange fires. Strange fires. Strange circumstances going on all over the place. You hear what families are going through and you can't make sense of it and say, what on earth is going on? There is an adversary. There is an adversary. On loose. He's been loose. He's on the loose. And Peter said, he said, be sober. Be vigilant. These are the days of being vigilant and sober. These are the days of having a sound mind. These are not the days to be arrogant. And these are not the days to be ignorant. And these are not the days to be prideful. But these are the days of being vigilant and sober. For your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, Walking about seeking who he may devour. I refuse to be devoured. Ah, tell somebody I refuse to be devoured. Tell somebody I will not be devoured. I will not be devoured in the name of Jesus. That means you can be devoured. You can't be ignorant of his devices. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, he talks about we are not ignorant of his devices. 2 Corinthians 2, 11. Lest Satan should have or get Satan advantage. should get an advantage of us. Uh -huh. For we are not ignorant of his devices. We can't be in the dark anymore. We cannot be ignorant. The Bible says for my people are destroyed for the lack of illumination. Lack of light. Lack of laser discernment. Lack of insight, lack of a seeing eye, lack of a hearing ear. My people are destroyed. I refuse to be destroyed. Tell somebody I refuse to be destroyed. I refuse to be in the dark. I refuse. I refuse to be ignorant. You know, when you go to Ephesians, the sixth chapter, it talks about the different armor. 
there. He talks about, I put on the whole armor of God. And if you look at, he talks about the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith. And he talks about the belt of truth and different pieces of the armor of God. But there's one thing, there's one armor that is not here that we so need in the days we live in like never before. And that is the armor of light. The armor of light uncovers, exposes, and it reveals the hidden plans of the enemy in darkness. The armor of light is laser discernment that it doesn't matter what he's cooking in the womb of time. The armor of light gives you the audacity to know. Adulas, awalakus, ilatukun kasitanda kawasan. Telukusun kudavasin. Romans 13 12. Romans 13 12. Ah, the night is far spent. The day is far advanced. spent. Yes, sir. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness mm -hmm. and let us put on the armor of light. This is an armor Ephesians 6 don't talk about. The armor of light. It exposes, it uncovers. It reveals the hidden things in darkness. I was in Atlanta, Georgia some years ago in a conference. And in the service, I felt this restlessness inside of me. And there was this heaviness on me. And I felt a spirit of grief, a spirit of grief, like waves, waves of the spirit of grief was hitting me in the service and I couldn't concentrate on whatever the preacher was saying. Bobby G. Mack was speaking. I couldn't hear anything. So I got up and I went to my hotel. I didn't know what to pray for, as I ought to pray. So I began to pray in the spirit. Say, Oh, Sadiakata, Lefasa, Uta. Le moon, Kayan, the Vianda Kasakum, Le Kaya Santi Kuasalan. My mind was unfruitful. My mind was all over the place. I couldn't make sense of what I was saying, but I knew I had to trust the Spirit to pray through me. I had to let my spirit pray that knoweth all things to make sense and to reveal to the Father, to communicate to the Father of all spirits what was going on in the realms of darkness that I couldn't make sense of with my natural mind and understanding. Then suddenly, the awareness came to me that there was a problem with one of my sisters. So I called the husband and I said, Morris, What's going on with Dorothy? And he said, how do you know? And I said, what? And she said, he said, she's at the intensive care. It's not looking good. It's not looking good this time around. She went to give, her to, she went to give birth to her baby. And throughout her pregnancies, she had to do cesarean. They have to cut her with knife. So this time again, she had to go through that. And there were some complications. And so when he said that, I said, okay, I'll come back to you. So I called my mom. And I said, mom, I need you to do something for me. And he said, what? I said, I want you to pray. Eh? And I want you to make an atonement for Dorothy. And I want you to tell the devil that this is between you and your daughter. And you want him to stay out of it. Then I said, I need you to repeal those curse words and I know the implications of your words and he said what are you trying to say I said you curse your daughter and he said what are you telling me my son I said you know when we were young and whenever you two have a misunderstanding you will say things like that go ahead and disrespect me and dishonor me but when you go to have your children you, know, you will know what it means to be a mother when you go to have your children, you will feel the pain and know what it means to be a mother and you will never disrespect me again. I was a kid. I didn't know the implications of that. Until the Spirit helped me to understand and to make sense of it, that those words of my mother out of pain 
was a curse. And throughout her pregnancy, she went through cesarean. They always have to cut her. And those cesarean, that knife was a result of this, my mother's pronouncement. She spoke out of pain and said, like my father said, and like Idahosa said to me, Bamba, you go grow. When I see people gifted and anointed who have been, been tested and tried and they are making noise and despising elders, I pity you. It's just a matter of time. Make no mistake. It's just a matter of time. And you'll be tested and tried and you get to a point when your gift and your anointing and your success and your numbers is not holding on. And that is when you realize that the gift and the anointing is not for you personally or for your family. It is given to whosoever believes. So unless your own children and your loved ones develop faith in the gift and in you, they can't benefit from it. That's why Jesus went to his hometown in Nazareth and he was limited. He couldn't perform much miracle. In his own town, he had to leave his own family and go outside to somewhere else to get results because the, the Bible said his own people looked at him and said, what are you trying to prove? We know you. You are the son of the carpenter. Jesus, stop all these things you are trying to do. You can't prove anything. We know you. That limited and restricted his ability that was God in the flesh he couldn't function without faith for without faith it's impossible to please God so it is not about your gift and your anointing it's about your loved ones having faith in God and in the gift and in the anointing other than that even you yourself if you don't develop personal faith you can't profit from the gift others will but you won't that's why Elisha was sick and died of his sickness. And there was power to raise the dead in his bones. But he couldn't prevent his death because he hadn't developed personal faith to exercise the gift to his gain and profit. I was telling them in the first service that as I've grown and maturing, I checked a lot of things and I realized certain errors I made, unconscious errors when I was growing up. Married very, very young at the age of 23. Didn't understand a lot of things. Ministry was tough in those days. So my life was always on the road. I was always gone. I was telling them about Bishop Ben, I used to go six weeks, sometimes eight weeks to North America, South America, Asia, travel for days to be able to make ends meet, to provide and take care of the family because the church couldn't take care of me. And I learned, I learned very early not to depend on tithes and offering and depend on people because that will wound you. I had one experience and I said no more. I'm not depending on anybody but God. And I realized when I look back and I look at the lives of my kids, I realize that there is a vacuum that has been created that is going to take a lot of grace and wisdom to bridge that gap. And this was what created the vacuum. I was never there. I provided. I paid their school fees. I made sure they had everything they needed, but I was never there. And I'll go. And even when I come, most times I'm tired, so I have to sleep. And by the time I'm up in the morning, they've left for school. Because I wake up and pray at midnight and go back to sleep. So by the time I'm up, they've left for school. By the time they come back, I'm in the office. When I come back from the office, they are asleep. When they wake up, I'm asleep. And it went on for many years. And I realized just recently by revelation that I was an absentee father. That even though I love them and I cared for them, I lacked understanding of many things that is not just provision and providing, but you need to have that emotional connection. And it wasn't there. So they have to 
raise themselves and they got to learn to be survivors and create all kinds of things in order for them to survive and to fill that void. But nobody can fill those void and nothing can fill that void but the love of a father. And it is taking a lot of work to try and bridge that gap. Yesterday I took my grandchildren into the pool and I started doing aerobics with them in the pool. And as I was dancing with them and exercising with them in the pool, I realized that that was what I should have done when my children were like their age. And let me say this to you. Let me say this to fathers and mothers. I know you mean well, and I know you love your kids. And I know you got to provide and smith. And you got to go out there and work and fight because life is tough and life is not fair. And life does not give you what you desire or expect by what you fight for. But in the mix of fighting for everything to provide for them, make a little time every now and then to bond with them because you're going to need it. Because if you don't bond with them now, there'll come a time and there'll be such a vacuum between you and them that it's going to take a lot to fill it. One of my sons, he don't call me dad. I've done everything to say, listen, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, call me dad. And he keeps unconsciously calls me, say, say, say. Because he never saw me as a dad as he was growing up. He saw me as say. He saw me as this anointed, gifted, powerful man of God, but not a dad. Because I was never around to play with him. To do things with him. So he can see me as a dad and a friend. And I'm trying to make it up to work at it, to bridge the gap. And he takes everything you can take, you can think of. He takes every grace. He takes every humility. He takes all your humanity. Madula kasa. Wasalahatu kifalu salas. Madi kusan kutan de kasi. I was talking to my, one of my bishop and I said, I said, young man, how many kids you have? He told me, what is their ages? And I said, please make time. Make time for those kids. I said, you can replace your wife, you can replace anybody, but you can't replace those kids. They are born of your bone, flesh of your flesh, and it is your blood that flows through their veins. Make time, connect with them right now, because a time will come when it may be too late, and it will only take a divine intervention to bridge the gap. So they grow up. They grow up with all kinds of attitudes. And sometimes you ask, you say, what is this? What's going on here? It began a long time ago. We called them trauma. 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 And it, it, it creates triggers. Things will trigger them. The trauma causes triggers. And you see them doing things, acting out of character. And you actually say, what did I do wrong? You didn't do anything wrong. You just miss certain moments. There are moments in life that fathers and mothers must never miss. Adela ki salatazund, ketu kusand, ke la kusu wadala hasa, adili ki motun ki falasid. One of my children's birthday was up, and he said, Dad, my birthday is up. I need you to be around. And I'm supposed to travel. So I called my travel agent and I said, you know what, cancel the ticket. Said it to cost me. I said, it doesn't matter what it costs me, cancel the ticket. And she said, Dad, you can travel, you can travel, you can go. I'm fine, I'm okay. And I said, no, you're not okay. I'll be around. I'm not going. Even though she said, you can go, you can go, you can go, she doesn't mean it all. She doesn't mean it. And it will be held against me one day. And it will pile up and add up to all the time I've been absent. So I said, I'll cancel myself. I'm not going. I don't care what meeting it is. I'm not going. I'll be here. And she said, when will you go? I said, don't worry. I said, oh, but you can leave that now. I said, no, I'm not going that day. I'm not traveling. It's your birthday. I'll be here. Nothing matters by your birthday. I'll be here. Because if you don't let them know that they are precious, they are important, 
they will grow up with this sense of they don't matter when they matter. And they work like they don't matter. And do things like they don't matter. And you ask yourself, what did I do wrong? You didn't do anything wrong. You just missed certain moments. Lekutu kafasala. Salakatum kawasalan. Bivan kuwahasan. Hey, lusulu wasin. Akusu wala hasan. Kifulu kufasa. Kusulu kifasa. Amisuku. Don't miss those moments. Tell somebody, don't miss those moments. Don't miss, don't miss those moments. Yeah. 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 Certain moments when they are graduating. Certain moments, weekends when they are in boarding schools and all their friends and and, 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 and loved ones, their families are coming and you are not there. And I wasn't there also sometimes because I was busy somewhere. And just putting them in a boarding school and paying those expensive school fees, I thought was okay. But that wasn't okay. And why is their friends, family, and parents come to be with them and they are all alone and away from home? Father is not there. Mother is not there. You have no idea the damage. You have no idea the impact it does on them. The rejection, the torture, the torture and the sins, the feeling of abandonment and rejection. My dad is never around. Turn your Bibles, please, to the book of James 5.13 Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. God has set certain protocols. They are spiritual protocols and patterns by which things are done in the kingdom. And he said, if any, is there any among you in pain, tortured, suffering, afflicted, let him pray. And when I talk about prayer, this kind of prayer is a continuous prayer or praying. Pray till something happens. Pray till you see change. Pray till the affliction is lifted. Pray till you have a permanent solution. Pray till you have the note of victory. Pray till you feel peace in your heart. Pray till you have the note of victory. Pray till you have the upper hand. You can just pray and relax. You pray until something happens. It's a continuous prayer. Pray till the afflicted, the affliction comes to an end. Pray till your captivity is ended. Pray till it doesn't hurt anymore. One of my bishops said, Papa, how do you deal with the pain of betrayal? I said, you pray till it doesn't hurt anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I was dealing with a betrayer the other day, and he said, Papa, how, how are you doing? How you handle this? And I said, I'm fine. And he said, how? I said, I don't feel the pain. I don't feel the pain. I don't feel the hurt because I've prayed myself. I've prayed myself to a level where even though the affliction is there and the betrayer is clear, I feel no pain. And I'm not angry with them. And I'm not angry with anyone. I have learned like the eagle to rise, to rise above the storm. Rise, rise above the storm. Don't react. Learn to be calm in the face of the storm. Believe God for the upper hand. Put your hands together. Give him praise. Are you clapping? This is like you have malaria. There are certain medication doctors prescribe to help you deal with a malaria parasite. You can try any other thing and it won't work. And that is what it is. That it is only prayer 
that deals with affliction. Psalm 34 verse 19. Psalm 34 verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Out of all, not some, but all. God said, I guarantee deliverance. If you pray, I guarantee deliverance. He didn't say many are the afflictions of the sinner or the unrighteous. As a matter of fact, the reason for the affliction is because of your stand of righteousness. It's because of your stand of righteousness. Because the enemy don't worry about those he has already conquered. He's interested in those he hasn't yet conquered. So he will throw everything at you to get you to compromise, to backslide, to give in. But if you stand your ground, he will compromise. Are you hearing me? The strategy is to weary you and to say, after all these prayers, what else? What else? Somebody said to me yesterday, say, Papa, you, eh, if you stop all this prayer, 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 you'll be okay. And I said, even though I'm praying, can you imagine the things I'm dealing with with praying? So what happens if I don't pray at all? I said, young man, I said, young man, you're a child. You don't get it. And I said, thank you. For your, for your gift, for your revelation. But I'm not convinced. You can't, you can't get me born again on this one. I'm already born again. I'm already a prayer addict. I'm addict. I'm addicted. I'm addicted to prayer. Can't help it but to pray. And, and, and James 5, he said, is anyone in pain? Is anyone tortured? Is anyone suffering? He didn't say go on the... Go online, get angry, isolate yourself from the brethren and the family. He didn't say rebel. He didn't say find other ways of dealing with the pain. He didn't say smoke. He didn't say drink. He didn't say go after men, women. He didn't say all, he didn't say to do all the things we do to numb the pain or the suffering. It doesn't work. He said the only remedy and prescription to affliction is prayer. And so, if you don't pray continuously, as you ought to pray continuously, you prolong the affliction. You prolong it. Hmm. The many afflictions is not because you are unrighteous. It's because you are righteous. And it looks like the more you pray and the more you decide to take a stand for God and do the right thing, the more you decide that you don't want anything to do with that marriage man or, or, or that married woman. You don't want to have anything to do with that person. It, it, that is when that person is, is really crazy about you and throws all the things at you and give you all the things you've never had before and all that. Yeah. And you ask yourself, how come... All of these are happening to me. Rather when I've decided to take a stand for God. Somebody said to me the other day, he said, you know, I was, I was making so much money when I wasn't living right. When I was fooling everywhere, things were working for me. As soon as I took a stand for God, it looks like everything, everything is falling apart. I can't make sense of it. And I say, yeah, you'll be tested. Your faith will be tested. Your love will be tested. Your relationship will be tested. Your character will be tested. Your obedience will be tested. Anything that is not tested that you have is not yours. You can lose it. Yeah. It doesn't matter how big you think you are, how sophisticated, how much load, loaded and deep pocket you are. It's just a matter. Everything will be tested. You see, you know why people boast, eh? And people walk around with a bad attitude and arrogance and proud. They don't study history. When you study history, eh, it will humble you. Because you see what happened to great people, to powerful people more than you and I. And you will see their end and that will humble you. If you study the empires of Rome and their power and who they were, and what became of them? And if you look at the pharaohs of Egypt, the Book of Nezah of the Babylonian Empire, the 
Al Ahasuerus of the Christian Empire, Alexander the Great, and so many others, the Hitlers of Germany, the Gaddafis of Libya. If you look at the powers, the wealth, the influence of some of these powerful people, eh, you humble yourself. You realize that you, eh, you are a tilapia. You are a mosquito. So take it easy. Tell somebody, I know you are very connected, but take it easy. Take it easy. Yes, sir. Take it easy. If you study history, eh, you'll be very humble. And if you go, if you go to the mortuary, if you go to the mortuary and you go to funeral houses and you see men and women so great and powerful lying in a casket, can't utter a word, and there are rings, there are watches, there are Louis Vuitton, and you name all those things, there are shoes, there are beautiful dresses. Heavy bank accounts, someone else, a stranger, is going to take it. And Solomon said something the other day. I think it's Ecclesiastes 2 or so. He said, I have applied myself. I have been wise, said Solomon, to acquire all these wealth and riches. And then listen to what he said. He said, but this is something I have observed and it's also vanity. Then he said, I don't know who will succeed me and who takes after and who will inherit all that I have worked for and apply myself for. Whether he will be wise or foolish. And he was, he was, he was unwise, Solomon. He was unwise. He mishandled everything and 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 Solomon, no, it was rather Solomon. And Solomon was so concerned about what shall become of his legacy. Read it. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 from 17. Therefore I hated life because... Ecclesiastes the chapter 2. From verse 17. From verse 17. Listen, Therefore, this Therefore I hated life because the way said, that is wrought under the sun is grievous unto me. Yeah. For all is vanity and vexation of spirit. He said all is vanity, all this sweat and, and all these acquiring houses and lands and power and money and cities and foreign exchange and building this and acquiring this. And I, the people don't care who they hurt. The relationships they damage, who they destroy to acquire all the things they are acquiring. Meanwhile, you're not taking anything. As much as even the shoes, even the shoes, you, don't, you won't take the shoes with you. When I was writing my will the other day, you know what my lawyer asked me? My lawyer said, uh, Papa, your shoes, who should the shoes go to? I never thought about it. He said, the shoes, your ring, your watches, who are you giving it to? And I said, wow. I was facing the reality. I haven't thought about it. I have not thought about it. That you won't go with your shoes. Yeah, I like shoes, but it ain't going nowhere. Some of you women, I had this daughter of mine in America. She, we, we went for a program, and we couldn't find them. They went to buy shoes. And I said, why? You have enough shoes. Can I pray for you? He said, Papa, I don't want deliverance from this one. Pray to deliver me from everything, but don't deliver me from the shoes demon. Yea, I hated all my labor which I had taken under the sun. Uh -huh. Because I should leave it unto the man that shall be after me. Uh -huh. And who knoweth whether he shall be a wise man or a fool. Uh -huh. Yet shall he have rule over all my labor wherein I have labored. Mm -hmm. And wherein I have shown myself wise under the sun. Uh -huh. This is also vanity. Yes, sir. Come on, somebody say, yes, sir. Hey, hey, take your time. Oh. Don't lose your humanity. As you are succeeding in life, money, houses, investment is not everything. It will all go to somebody. 
And whoever it goes to may be a fool or may be wise. And whether he'll be wise or a fool, only time and the future knows. And only God knows. Ah, when you think of these things, eh, and if it doesn't humble you, you were not born. You didn't come into this world. You were a fool. I'm telling you. Yeah. We don't pray in tongues anymore. We don't sing in the spirit anymore. And there are times, you know, there's a scripture we quote all the time, but we quote it out of context and wrongly. Come to the book of Romans 8. I want you to begin reading from 26 to 28. Look at something. Look at it in context. You have to look at the pretext and pretext to appreciate the context of the text. Other than that, you can misquote. Look at it from verse 26. Likewise. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Mm -hmm. For we know not what the, we should The word infirmity for. here means your inability, your inability to express the pain and to, and to pray as you ought to pray. You are restricted. You are limited. You are not praying intelligently and skillfully and wisely as you ought to pray because you are limited. You, you lack knowledge. You lack light and illumination. That's why he talks about the armor of light. Because the armor of light is laser discernment. Where you come into a place of awareness of what is going on. The secret things in darkness are revealed unto you. Go ahead. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. With groanings. So there come a time when... You can feel the burden. You feel the weight. You feel the heaviness on your chest. You can feel it. You know something is off. Something is wrong. But you can't put your finger on it. Like I said about my sister. And when my mom came back to me and said, I have done what you said. I called the husband and said, she'll be fine. She'll be fine. For the first time, after having cesarean for all her children, she had the last one without caesarean, natural birth. And the, husband, the doctor said it is impossible when they begin having their children with caesarean, it must continue that way. And you know why? There was a reason for the caesarean. My mother's words out of pain created a knife. Adu kasan, kadulu kusalas. Today, let that knife be taken out. Let the sword be removed in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together and say, I remove the sword. I remove the sword. I remove the sword out of my life. Out of the life of my loved ones. I take away the sword. The sword that causes constant surgeries. Hey, hey. I annul the sword by the blood of the covenant. I cancel the sword. Are you hearing me? Look at me. Sikain, Sikain, Sikain biya bawa brabo mono. Me jina Yesu moje no mo me chem. Ejantum, ejantum, ejantum. In the name of Jesus, put your hands. Ejantum, ye chem, ye chem, ye chem, ye chem. Wa moje no mo. For years to demo, a gentleman, hear me, hear me. To medical science, to medical science, she needed cesarean to have the baby, or than that, she could lose the child or lose her life. And the only way was cesarean. But spiritually, it was my mother's words out of hurt and out of pain. There is a word among the Jews and it's this word, shalom, shalom. Shalom has two meanings. 
One meaning of shalom is peace. Another meaning of shalom is destroying the authority responsible for the chaos that peace may prevail. Until you lay the axe to the root and uproot the tree, you can deal with the branches and the leaves and the fruits in changing nothing. There is always a story behind the story. Today I pray, I lift up prayer. Let the main cause, let the one responsible for the chaos in your life and in the life of your loved one, in the name of Jesus, be destroyed, destroyed, destroyed. Put your hands together, pray that prayer. Let the one responsible for the chaos in our lives, in this house, in this land, in this nation, let those responsible for the chaos in the name of Jesus be intercepted, terminated, terminated. Put your hands together. Destroy. Destroy, O oh Lord. Divide their tongues. For they are the reason for the violence and the chaos in town. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Sit down for two minutes. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit. Uh -huh. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Yes, sir. And we know that all things work together for good to uh -huh. them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. You see, the key to unlocking verse 28 is in 26 and 27. Unless you do 26 and 27, all things won't work together for your good. It can go against you. But if you do 26, 27, whatever they have cooked, whatever they have hatched, whatever they have devised, it doesn't matter how strong the conspiracy is and how close the thing is to you, it will tend for your good. Yes, sir. I said it to turn. And so right now, I command, I command every evil wind to turn in your favor. I command the tables to turn in your favor. Put your hands and say, I command, let the tables turn in my favor. Let strong conspiracies and devices turn, turn, turn. Let it turn in my favor. Let it turn. Let it turn. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, Come with me. Come with me. Come with me to 1 Corinthians 14, 2, 14, 4, 14, 14, and 15, 14, 18. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men. So when I pray in the spirit or I pray in tongues, I'm not communicating to men. I'm moving at another frequency. You can't touch me there. You can't access me. You can't decode what I'm saying. It's like, it's like you know, when, when you're of a particular tribe and you are talking in the language of that tribe and there are people who don't understand that tribe. You know, sometimes I'll be talking Ewe or Awusa or Wala or Frafra with people from that area. And then I'll see others. Ghanaians, they want to know. I use a word sometimes, yala mobi. It's a wala language. It's a, it's a particular proverb in wala. And they ask, Papa, what is yala mobi? And I said, you need interpretation of tongues. Are you hearing me, somebody? So, so when I speak, when I speak in tongues, you can't decode it. My mind is unfruitful. You can wonder. I remember many years ago, many years ago, I was with a friend of mine, a prophet, Michael McCann. He's going to be with the Lord. And we were sitting in a hotel room, and suddenly I felt this presence. And he said, did you feel it? And I said, yes, I feel something. He said, they are here. And I said, who? He said, demons. He said, they've come. They want to hear our conversation. So let's switch. 
So he began to pray in the spirit, and I also began to pray in the spirit. And then the demons were looking at one another, confused. What are they saying? We're praying, we pray in tongues for a long time, and then they left. Sometime we'll be in the car, and I'll be praying in tongues. And he said, Nick, Nick, do you realize the language you were speaking? I said, well, he said, you just spoke in, in Greek. In Greek, you're communicating. In different language. I had a guy, he was in this church years ago, when we were in my father's house. His name was Ramios Musasa. And Ramios came to me one day, he said, Papa, pray for me. I'm confused. I, I don't know whether I should marry a Ghanaian or I should go home and marry. And I said, let us pray. As we were praying, I began to speak in other tongues. I started speaking in other tongues. Then he said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I hear you. Thank you, Lord. I get it. Thank you. So I stopped and I said, Ramius, what is going on? He said, he said, you are speaking in my dialect. I said, what kind of dialect? He said, you just spoke in my dialect. My dialect. And the Lord said, I should go home. My wife is in Zimbabwe. That I shouldn't marry here. He has a wife for me in Zimbabwe. And I said, Ramius, what are you saying? He said, yes, Papa, you are speaking my language. It's very clear. And he went home. And it was exactly what the Lord said when I was speaking in tongues. But I didn't know what I was speaking. I was just speaking. We speak the language of angels. And God gives us utterance to speak. Are you hearing me? Go For ahead. he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God. Unto God. And God hears it. God knows what we are saying. So don't look at me without your intellectual look. When I speak in tongues, my mind is unfruitful. My mind can be traveling all over the place. still makes no difference. My spirit is communicating to the father of all spirits. My mind may not understand or make sense of it. But my spirit is making sense of it. Go ahead. For no man understandeth him. How be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. So when I pray in tongues, I'm revealing mysteries. Mysteries are being known. And a mystery is something that is hidden from you. So when we speak in tongues, we demystify mysteries. We uncover hidden agendas and plans and devices and conspiracy in the womb of time. We demystify mysteries. That is the power of tongue. One day my father said to me, he said, Nicholas, that language you've been speaking in my house, stop it. What is that? Can't you pray in English or in tree? What is that language? Stop it. And I realized that, oh, okay, the tongues is doing something. So me too, I'll go hard myself and I'll fire. I'll go to the rooftop, three in the morning. And I did it for many, many, many years. And there was a lady, an African-American lady, Peggy Menza. And she was married to a man who opposite my father's house, B.A. Menza. And after many years, she saw me and said, can I ask you something? That language you've been praying, you talk, you talk in a certain, what language is that? And I say, it's a heavenly language. Amen, go ahead. He, verse 4, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. The word edify means you build up yourself. When you pray in tongues, it gives you a lift. It gives you an advantage over the natural. You need that advantage. Go ahead. 14. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, uh -huh. but my understanding is unfruitful. So your mind is unfruitful, but your spirit is active. Your spirit is moving. Kadu sadas. Lekutu wa kasala hasitis. Go ahead. What is it then? I will pray with my spirit, uh -huh. and I will pray with the understanding also. Uh -huh. I will sing with the spirit, uh -huh. and I will sing with the understanding You see, also. we don't sing in the spirit anymore. Some of you, a whole day comes and go. A whole week and a month, and you don't pray in tongues. The gift is dormant. You are not activating the gift. You are not using it. You pray in tongues once in a while. Shalom, 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 shalom. Ask somebody, what is this shaking about? I go on for days, 
And all I do is to pray in tongues because I don't, I can't make sense of what I'm feeling. Sometimes I feel this heaviness. I feel, I feel this grief and weight. It's like something is trying to exact on me and weigh me down. And I have to pray in the spirit. Ah, Bekusu, ah. Sefalu katung kitu kasa wasi ata aludan akuanda avalutu kuwasalinda imalakundi kasalahan ah yekufusunka ileya tu kalin imanduka awundu kalihasia amalaya kutung kasalahasa. And you have to also learn to pray in the, to sing in the spirit every now and then. Mm. Imamandu pian de la mabu, ilamamandolo, ileburusun kuriang, ikurungadu, ielemoku sadia, ayende kufulia, ayende kawala sitia madala yu, ayende kawala hansia, iando masia, aye kituki ando, ayalamandu. Cassando Vosia in the Vundu Zaniangia, Amura la King Zanariando, Ayen de King Vola Mamma Madi, Ayen de Mamacu, Ayala Mamma Sinea, Ayana Likin Sidingi, Ingunza de la Bunda, Ayan do Kimiando, Aveli Kiondo Savadin, Avada la Madi, do Likiando, do 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 I don't need to sing in the spirit like if he sings. It's not about how sweet the voice is. He's making melody unto the Lord. He's lifting the burdens, breaking through the clouds. Ah, said Oluka Sala Kasida, do laki hasia, di kasan. You don't pray in the spirit anymore. We don't know how to pray in the spirit. Yes. You got to learn how to pray in the spirit. In other tongues. For hours. And sing in the spirit for a long time. And you don't have to make sense of it. You do it till the, till the burden is lifted. Till the pain is lifted. Till the grief is lifted. Till the heaviness is lifted. Till the affliction is lifted. Till you don't feel pain anymore. That is the way I win my battles. I was telling one of my sons, I said, son, son, this is the way I win my battle. Lift up your hands. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Come on, somebody, open your mouth. Pray in the spirit. Ha! Ha! Hey! Hey! Somebody, open your mouth. Stop being nice. Stop all this being nice. Open your mouth. Fire. Lift prayer till the burden is lifted. Till you don't feel the pain anymore. Come on, somebody. Till the affliction is ended, is lifted. Open your mouth. Don't let the enemy exact on you. Kadus, Lesa, Isala, Wasia, Akadala Sutan, Akantu Falin, Alinde Valun, Salahan, Ikanda Kasun, Dukawan, Bevan, Tukun, Tukasabis. Hey, 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 somebody, whoever you are, wherever you are, open your mouth, put your hands together, fire. Push it, push it, push it. Let yourself go. Give yourself to prayer. Don't hold back. 
Don't hold back. Let yourself go. Push it. Push it. Hear me. Before, before we come to the Lord's table and declare Passover, I want every father and mother come to the altar. Families are going through hell. There's a strange attack on families to scatter families, to kill fathers, to kill mothers, to kill children in the name of Jesus. If you're having issues with your knees, you don't have to come up. You can stay there and just pray. Balu Salas, Selutu Ku Walasin, Ali Kasalun, Kefalu Kusan, Le Halun, Kidan, Kuan, Selundu Kali Adis, Adi Kusan, Kadila Hasat, Ha, Mosakalidas. Give me Luke 22, 31. Luke 22, 31. Simon, Simon. Satan. Oh, Satan had desired to have you. It means that Satan has asked for you. He's made a demand to have you. That he may sift you as wheat. Yeah, he said to have you. First of all means to capture you. To take hold of you. And after having you, to sift you as wheat. But Jesus said, I have, I have negotiated. You. No, I have intervened. No, sir. By what? Prayer. He said, I pray. I have prayed for you. Jesus said, no. the only way to stop the enemy is to pray. And this word here, that word, to have you sift you as we, that was Satan's plan and agenda for the life of Peter. Whatever the enemy has planned for you and your family, in the womb of 2024, let it be intercepted and let it be aborted. Look at me. Sometimes eh, things happen and you can't make sense of it. And you actually say, what is this? What is going on? You try everything you know how to and still it's going on. It's like a constant reoccurring cycle, cycles, waves. Look at, look at Hosea chapter 9 verse 14. Nothing happens by chance. As I'm talking to you, they are cooking things. They are burying things. Some of you are burying your picture, your name. But whoever buries anything in our name, let it backfire. Let it boomerang. Whoever takes us anywhere, to perform anything against us. Let it be overturned, overturned, overturned. Let it backfire. Let it boomerang in the name of... Now, look at Hosea 9.14. Give them, O Lord, what will thou give? Give them a miscarrying womb and dry breath. You see, there is a miscarrying, there is a womb. Say a womb. Say the womb of time. A womb. Children can't come into this world unless they are conceived in a womb. The womb of a woman is the legal entry to this earth. And in the spirit, there are wombs. So before the enemy carry out a plan for your life, it is hatched, conceived in what we call the womb of time. But today, today, Anything they are conceived and they are hatching and they are cooking as the enemy's plan and agenda for your life, for your loved ones, home and abroad, for this house, for this nation, in the womb of time, in the womb of 2024 and beyond, let it be intercepted and aborted, abort, abort, abort. Put your hands together, open your mouth. Come on, don't hold your peace. Put your hands together. Open your mouth. Intercept. Intercept. Abort. Abort. Intercept. Abort. Any plan of the enemy concerning our loved ones, our families, 
in the name of Jesus to cause pain to hurt us we intercept we are bought about intercept about intercept about whatever they have programmed in the womb of time to cause grief pain let it be intercepted and aborted in the name of Jesus intercepted and aborted in the name of Jesus Hear me. One of our sisters went to a funeral. Right there at the funeral, they went to the casket. And while they were closing the casket, the chair she sat on, somebody came and sat on the chair. And after the person got up and left. Then she went to the chair, prayed over the chair and sat on it. As soon as she sat on the chair, she got up. She started feeling dizzy. She started losing it. Energy and life was leaving her. She grabbed a chair quickly and sat down. Over 35 minutes, couldn't lift up her head. Almost passed out. Rushed to the hospital, put on all kinds of drips and all kinds of intervention. You know what happened? The Bible said, where the carcasses are, there, eh? there, goddess, eh? evil birds, that's where they gather. Look at Psalm 41, verse 5. Enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die? And his name perish. You see, that is what happens when you go to funeral. I don't say don't go to funerals. But every time you are going to funeral, anoint yourself. Take divine immunity. Because when you go to the funerals, the vultures are there. And they are targeting somebody who will go next. Some people, all they do in their life is attend funeral. Every funeral you go, they are there. My enemy say, when will he die? Anyone waiting to hear bad news about you and your family and your loved ones, let them be disappointed. Let them be put to shame. Put as your command, let them be disappointed and put to shame. That divides our head and demands. Come on, somebody. Put your hands together. Open your mouth. Pray. Over 10. Over 10. Let them be disappointed, put to shame. That divides our head and the head of our loved ones and our demise. Let the opposite of care in the name of Jesus. Let the opposite of care. Give me Ephesians 6 13. There is something the Bible calls an evil day. An evil day. And this evil day is a day that the enemy has appointed to have advantage over you and over your family and your loved ones. It's a day that takes you by surprise, unaware, unexpected. Turbulence, strong and violent winds and storms. Today we block them. Today we override them. Hear me. Whatever evil day they have calculated. I was watching a movie where a husband and wife they had a misunderstanding. And there were woman pushed the man 
and he fell on the back and his head hit the center table and he started bleeding and died that is an evil day it didn't just happen you know, the thing was hatched it was cooked it was in the womb of time we call them time sensitive attacks any evil day any time sensitive attack in the womb of time in the womb of 2024 and beyond hear me give me Esther chapter 9 verse 1 Esther chapter 9 verse 1 now in the 20th month that is the month of Adar on the 13th day the time came for the king's command and his decree to be executed on the day that the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them the opposite occurred say the day the day say any day in the womb of 2024 and beyond that they have programmed devised and cooked an evil outcome against me my family my loved ones this house my nation say on that day let the enemy be denied on that day let the opposite occur on that day let the tables turn in my favor. Put your hands up. Pray that prayer. pray this prayer one more time eh? and I intentionally I intentionally gives you these prayer points the reason is because I hear too much and sometimes Bishop will tell you it just breaks my heart the enemy don't play fair with Mary Mandalene there were seven demons in one person Jacob's great grandson God, 6,000 demons in one person. The enemy doesn't play fair. His loving kindness is cruelty. Evil is never satisfied till it destroys good. A young man, he used to come to church here. He went to school at Cape Coast University. His friends went to the beach to swim. He said he wasn't going to go. After a while, he decided to go. When he got there, they were all seated, having fun. Then the secretary from the school was swimming and she began to drown. So he ran to go and rescue her. In trying to rescue her, he drowned and she survived. That is an evil day. 
It wasn't by chance. It was cooked. And whatever was working it summons him. He was beckoned. Say, I refuse to respond to the beckonings of the enemy. Sometimes they beckon you, they call you, they summons you. And you begin to feel like going somewhere. It's not everywhere you go. Another lady, Bishop was talking to me about her. She had a surgery. I think, was it a brain surgery? And she succeeded. It went well. She was fine. She lived in a gated community. She got up one day and she said, oh, she's going for a walk. So she was just walking and exercising in her community. A car came from nowhere and hit her and killed her. After she escaped the brain surgery. Whatever wanted her was not satisfied. Today we raise counter attack. We raise counter motions. Hear me. My job, eh? my job is to make you aware of the realities of life and of things that exist in the spirit realm to stop making you live, the American call it, a life of naivete. Don't be naive. Don't be naive. Stop that naivete. Lift up your hands. Say in the name of Jesus. Any occasion the enemy is seeking by calculations, by programmings, manipulations, projections in the womb of 2024 to disadvantage me, to cause me pain or grief in any shape or form. Say, let it be intercepted and aborted in the name of, put your hands, open your mouth. One more prayer. Tell somebody, pray one more prayer. One more prayer. You know, Hitler shouldn't have been born. Hitler shouldn't have been born. Idi Amin shouldn't have been born. Hitler was appointed to carry out Satan's plan for three million Jews. One man. He was given the mandate to carry out what he did was not his plan. It was a plan that was cooked, hatched, programmed in the womb of time to annihilate innocent people. Three million. He was the vessel, the vehicle appointed to execute that plan. Haman 
in the days of Esther was the one appointed to carry out Satan's plan. Any man, any woman, any system, any vehicle, home and abroad, domestic and external, that have been appointed to carry out the plan of the enemy for our lives, the life of our loved ones, home and abroad, whoever they are, we intercept, we block them, let them disappear from the face of the earth. Put your hands together, pray that prayer. Any man, any woman, systems, technicalities, organization, legality, appointed home and abroad, domestic and external, to carry out, to execute Satan's agenda and plan for our lives. Whoever they are, we block them. Let them disappear. Disappear. Let them disappear from the face of the earth. In the name of Jesus, we command them, disappear, disappear, disappear. Let them not see the light of day. Whoever they are, let them disappear. Pray that prayer. Put your hands together. Let them disappear. Anyone appointed to carry out Satan's plan for my life, my family, my loved ones, home and abroad, this house, my nation, whoever they are, whatever powers they possess, let them be denied, stripped, and disappear, disappear, disappear. Let their defenses depart, 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 depart from them and let them disappear, disappear, disappear from the face of the earth. Hear me. Let's conclude with this scripture. Isaiah 41, from verse 10 to 13. Easy version. Easy version, Isaiah 41. I am with you, so do not be afraid. Uh -huh. I am your God, so do not be upset. I will make you strong. I will help you. My powerful right hand will keep you safe. Listen to this. Everyone who has been angry with you will now become completely ashamed. Those who have attacked you will disappear and die. Even if you look for your enemies, you will not find them. They will all disappear. Yes, I am the Lord, your God. I will hold you... I will hold on to your right hand. I say to you, do not be afraid. I will help you. Listen, let them disappear. Whoever they are, whatever they are working with, it doesn't matter how strong, tall they are, big. According to the scriptures, let them disappear. Home and abroad. Whoever has been appointed to end your life or the life of your loved ones, your family, Home and abroad, this house, this nation, whoever they are, let them disappear. Put your hands together. Announce it. Announce it. Proclaim it. Prophesy. Declare it. Let them disappear. Let them disappear from the face of the earth. Let them disappear. They will not see the light of day. They will not carry out the enemy's plot. Let them disappear. Put your hands together. Let them disappear. Now, 
Secure the life of your loved ones and your families. We command divine escapes and preservations for your families, your loved ones, your children, your wife, your husband, home and abroad. Divine escapes, divine preservation. Put your hands together. Pray for your loved ones. Pray for their preservation. Whatever they are, whoever they are, let them escape. 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 Let them be preserved. Escape. Preserve. Escape. Preserve. By air. By land. By water. Escape. Preserve. Divine. Escape. Escape. Preservation. Escape. Preservation. Immunity. Immunity. Take. Divine. Immunity. By the blood of Jesus. Over loved ones. Home and abroad. Divine. Escape. Preservation. Immunity. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Take your seats. Oya mi jira mechi sodo berima niho e oku mahami eti ma ta kunira eshi a zerani jina mechi o. Oh, boy. 